Hello, maintenance and operations teams. I'm Ryan Chan, the CEO and founder of Upkeep. Today, we're going to explore the often misunderstood concept of breakdown maintenance, what it is, when it's used, and its benefits and drawbacks. We'll compare it to preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance and show you some real examples of its application. By the end of this video, you'll have a comprehensive understanding of breakdown maintenance and whether it's right for your organization. Let's get started. Have you ever wondered what breakdown maintenance is? Well, you're in the right place. Breakdown maintenance is when maintenance is performed on equipment that has broken down, faulted, or cannot be operated. The main goal here is to fix something that has malfunctioned. This is different from preventive maintenance, which is performed to keep something running smoothly. Sometimes breakdown maintenance is performed because of an unexpected event. Let's say a critical piece of machinery breaks down. The maintenance is performed because of the urgent need for that machine to operate again. However, breakdown maintenance can also be planned in advance, and that's what we might call good breakdown maintenance. Now let's dive into the two types of breakdown maintenance. First, we have planned maintenance. This means that the organization is prepared for a breakdown and even expects it to happen. The equipment runs until it breaks, which initiates a run to failure or RTF trigger. While RTF triggers can be unplanned, breakdown maintenance plans use RTF as a way of lowering the cost of maintenance. This kind of plan needs to be rigorously documented and controlled. Employees should be clear on exactly which parts will break down and which parts will be maintained normally via preventive maintenance. Without these checks, a breakdown maintenance plan can be exploited or run awry. Second, we have unplanned breakdown maintenance. This occurs when a piece of equipment fails or breaks unexpectedly, also known as an unplanned downtime event. While some facilities may not utilize a planned maintenance plan, nearly every facility needs resources in place for unplanned maintenance. After all, every piece of equipment will break or fault at some point in its life. Breakdown maintenance is unique in its applications because it cannot be used with certain industries or products, especially ones that involve health and safety. This means that it is most frequently used when parts are inexpensive or non-essential. Here are five examples where breakdown maintenance is applicable. One, equipment can't be repaired at all, like when it's inaccessible or designed to not be repaired. Two, an asset consists of inexpensive or easy to replace parts. Three, non-critical pieces of equipment like hand tools. Four, objects or equipment that are disposable or meant to be replaced at the end of their lifespan. Five, short life assets like batteries or high flow pumps. As you can see from these examples, breakdown maintenance becomes viable when there's no inherent safety risk to letting a part or piece of equipment break. However, it is absolutely not viable when people's lives can be endangered by a part or product breaking. For example, the aviation industry cannot rely on parts breaking down to fix them because doing so could threaten the personal well-being and safety of people on planes. This is also true for tire manufacturers who are responsible for road safety. When it comes to people's lives, preventive and predictive maintenance are the right choice. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of breakdown maintenance. On the plus side, a clearly documented maintenance plan can actually have a few significant benefits for an organization. It minimizes maintenance cost by cutting out unnecessary preventive maintenance, lowers the cost of replacing disposable items frequently, downtime for repairs is consolidated, it requires low staffing needs, and it's simple and easy to understand when maintenance is required. On the downside, breakdown maintenance should never be used with safety equipment because a single lapse can cost one or multiple employees their health or their lives. It can be a form of waste in a manufacturing environment. Safety issues can occur with unplanned failures. It can be costly depending on parts that fail. It requires careful planning and execution, and it can be difficult to pinpoint the source of issues. You might be wondering, what's the difference between breakdown and corrective maintenance? Both deal with equipment that is faulty, less than optimized, and or broken, but they are not necessarily the same thing. The biggest difference is that breakdown maintenance works on equipment that is non-operational, while corrective maintenance takes place on equipment that is still functioning to some extent, but will not function at optimal capacity without the maintenance being performed. In conclusion, breakdown maintenance is not for every industry. In particular, industries that are directly responsible for people's safety should never use breakdown maintenance. However, it can be useful when working with disposable, cheap parts or equipment that cannot be repaired by normal means. The bottom line for maintenance is that it requires planning and coordination. An organization should never allow the maintenance to be exploited or used improperly. 
Thanks for watching. We've covered the concept of breakdown maintenance, its types, applications, and how it compares to preventive and corrective maintenance. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button to stay updated with our latest content. For more resources and information, visit our website at upkeep.com. Remember, maintenance is not just about fixing things, it's about planning and coordination. So keep learning, keep improving, and stay tuned for more from Upkeep.